The weekend is here. I've got ribs. I've got chicken. So today is going to be ribs and chicken mega feast out on the pit barrel cooker. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> So for the ribs and the chicken, we're going to be using a couple different seasonings today. For the ribs, I'm going to be using Texas Best Rib Rub from Heaven Made Products. And later in the cooking process, we're going to glaze those ribs with some Cheerwine barbecue sauce that I made the other day. And I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to check out how to make that barbecue sauce. It is killer. Now for the chicken, we're going to make our own rub today. We're going to start with three tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of kosher salt, one tablespoon of granulated garlic, one tablespoon of cracked black pepper, and one tablespoon of cracked white pepper. I'm just gonna pop our lid on and shake it up. And you just wanna get in there with a fork and break up any of those big lumps of brown sugar that clump together sometimes. Let's just take a little taste off this fork here. That is a nice peppery sweet rub. So let's go ahead and get this on our chickens. So I'm gonna be doing two chickens out on the pit barrel cooker today and four racks of ribs. The chickens I've cut in half. They're gonna be hanging from individual hooks. So first let's get the rub on them. And I'm just gonna do one here to show you how I'm doing this. Pretty simple, we're putting rub on half a chicken. Just gonna get a nice, easy coating on here, not too heavy. But over, get some on the inside. Just like that, sort of a nice light coating on there. Now we're gonna get our hook in here. Let me turn this guy around. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go right in here. Just like that. It's that simple. You just wanna go in right where the ribs are, come through, this chicken's gonna hang great. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of the chicken halves rubbed up and then we're gonna move on to the ribs. So the ribs we're gonna be using today are St. Louis cut ribs. Now. I want to show you something, and don't judge me. The membrane is still on. I've done, I don't know, probably 30 racks now on the pit barrel cooker, and I've just decided for almost all of them that leaving the membrane is on as a safety feature, because if they get very, very tender, it has happened to people, the rack will just separate where it gets tender, falls off right near the end of the cook, you lose half your rack of ribs down in the charcoal. The other reason is, Every rack of ribs I've ever made, whether the membrane is on or membrane is off, no one has complained. If you want to take the membrane off, feel free to take the membrane off. In the pit barrel cooker, I don't find it's necessary. And as I mentioned, we're using Heaven Made Products Texas Best Rib Rub today. So I just want to get a nice coating on here. This has that nice mix of sweet and savory. Yeah, we're gonna put a little on the back side, even with the membrane, not a lot, but there is meat exposed up on this side where the skirt is. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get our hook in now. I like to go down a couple bones here. So we've got this end bone, this bone. We're gonna go right between this one, just like that. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of these racks rubbed up and then we're gonna head out to the pit barrel cooker. the pit barrels fired up and ready to go. Let's get our ribs on because they're going on first. The chicken is going on in about an hour and a half. We're gonna have our ribs hanging on one side today over here. I'm gonna put a piece of cherry down here today for a little bit of smoke. So in an hour and a half when we put our chicken on, we'll be checking the ribs, see if we need to spritz them. Probably in about three hours for the ribs, we're gonna glaze them with that barbecue sauce. But for now, let's get our lid on and get smoking. So once the ribs are on there now, it's really just set it and forget it with the PVC. If we weren't doing chickens, 
I would probably just let those go for about three hours before I check them. But after that 90 minutes, it doesn't hurt to give it a look and see if you need to spritz it if it's getting dry. I think we'll be good though. The ribs will probably be done after about four total hours of cooking. It's gonna be about tenderness with them, how much flex, how much they probe tender. The chickens are gonna be done when they're at 165 internal. So if we're lucky, everything might time out just about at four hours. So I'll see you back here in 90 minutes when we check these ribs and put our chicken on. All right, we've been going 90 minutes. It's time to get our chicken on and check those ribs. We've already got great color on those ribs and look at that pullback already. Just fantastic. What I want to do here is I want to rotate these just a little bit. I'm going to move this one down and this one down to this other end. Seems to be a little hotter right over here. It's on the vent side, that happens sometimes. I want to give these a quick little spritz here. This is a mixture of water and apple cider vinegar. Four parts water, one part apple cider vinegar. Let's go ahead and get our chickens on. If you can see, you can get the wing to just kind of hang over the end of the hook. Helps hold it there. quickly get my temperature probe in one of these chicken breasts here. I want to get our lid on, get smoking. And we're going to check these in about an hour because those ribs are cooking pretty quick. And it looks like we got good placement on that probe, 39 degrees, just perfect. So I'll see you back here in about an hour. So it's been about 25 minutes since we put the chicken on. And I was thinking about it, those ribs were looking really tender. So I think I'm actually going to sauce them now. I don't want to wait that extra hour because when you look at the pullback there, these have got to be getting pretty tender. So let's move these to the tray. So just as a tenderness test here, I want to just kind of probe this. Yeah, it's getting pretty tender. I don't want to go too much, but I think we're at the right time to glaze it now. All right, so this is some of that Cheerwine barbecue sauce that I made for another video, made out of Cheerwine soda. Check out that video if you want to see how to make it. Super easy and really, really tasty. I'm gonna flip it over because I do want to get some on the back side, even with that membrane there. You'll see that down here at the bottom that's the closest to the charcoal, you will get some charring sometimes. It does not hurt the flavor at all. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these glazed up and we'll get them back on the PVC. Did anyone just see that? We just lost a rack. Okay, I'm gonna have to reset this one. These are more tender than I thought here. I think I'm only gonna give these about 20 minutes in this glaze. Let's see, this one's holding. All right, we rehooked this one. Hopefully, hopefully it will survive. Let's see. All right, let's get her lid back on. Let these ribs finish up for about 20 minutes more. Chicken's gonna take a little bit longer. All right, we've been going another 20 minutes here. It's time to get these ribs off. I'm not gonna take a chance of any more of them breaking. This one looks like we're about to lose it again. So I'm gonna grab the meat and the hook and cross my fingers. Ah, got it. All right, let's get the lid back on, let our chickens finish up. All right, we've been going for a little over two hours. Our chicken has just hit about 164 internal. I wanna check it with the thermopen, so let's have a look. You might notice that the chicken's a little more spread out. That's because I moved a couple of the half birds over to the other hanging rod once the ribs were out of there. I thought, why not spread them out a little bit? Let's check our temps and verify. See how we're doing over here. That is 166. I'm just gonna confirm in one more here. That's 165. All right, I'm gonna get these off of here, get them inside, let them rest for about five, 10 minutes. 
and then we're gonna taste some chicken and ribs. Sorry, this is all I could fit on my big cutting board without just piling more rib racks everywhere. But here is part of our mega feast from the pit barrel cooker. The ribs turned out terrific. I know that because my wife has already tasted one. I haven't. Now, they only took two and a half hours to cook. You saw how tender they got with me losing one, and that was with the membrane on. And I think I figured out what happened. I had some pre-burned charcoal in the bottom of the charcoal basket with fresh charcoal on top. It was charcoal that had been partially used. I have a feeling that that ignited much quicker than the fresh charcoal and just spread and burned quickly. That gave us a higher temperature, which cooked those ribs much quicker. Oddly enough, it did not hurt them at all. According to my wife, they're fantastic. We'll see in a minute. The chicken, as you can see, turned out really nice. Great color on there. Skin is good, not rubbery at all. I'm gonna cut into some of these right now. So let's check out our ribs first. Let me just turn this slightly. We got our bones going right here. Let's see if I can go right along the side of it. Let's get one rib right in the middle. Oh, nice. Got a nice little smoke ring there. Looking good. I'm gonna save that one for tasting. Let's get our chicken in here. Now I'm just gonna slice a piece of the breast. Now, I usually dive into the thighs, but I'm gonna try the breast first. Ooh, that is nice and hot still. Nice and juicy there. And I'm also gonna cut a piece from the thigh down here. Part here. Oh, look at that. Nice and juicy in the thigh too. I don't think I can cut anymore and I can't wait anymore. It's time to taste. All right, so decision is chicken or ribs? Which came first, the chicken or the rib? I'm gonna go with chicken first this time because I want that rib at the end. So I've got a nice piece of the thigh meat. I'm going with thigh meat first here. I know usually save that, I'll do breast meat first, but I'm gonna go with the thigh meat. Got some nice skin here. Mmm, the skin on that turned out just about perfect to me. I don't like to get it too crispy and risk the meat drying out. That's just between not rubbery and crispy, so it bites through nicely. I really like that, and it retained all the moisture in these thighs. Mm. Let's check out the breast meat now. That simple rub on there, a nice hint of that sweet brown sugar that's sort of the base of that rub, works really well on chicken, especially on the pit barrel cooker. You get almost that convection cooking as that hot air swirls up inside the barrel and really helps adhere that flavor to the skin. I am really just loving how the PBC cooks chicken. Now, onto our friend, Mr. Rib. I'm just diving in here, here we go. Ooh, exactly how I like it. Not fall off the bone, but where you can bite it and it pulls away from the bone. Oh boy, that, I'm getting actually both the barbecue sauce that I made and that rub. That rub is really good. A lot of juice in this thing. Mm. I'm almost forgetting to talk here because I just want to stand here and eat this. It's that good. The PBC is a rib machine. And again, these cooking as fast as they did, two and a half hours for the ribs, it didn't suffer for that. Now, I don't know if ribs would have turned out the same way. Let's say I did them on the kettle or the offset and somehow the fire had been extra hot. I don't know that they would have turned out as good as these did on the pit barrel cooker. Something about that with that action of the heat rising directly below the ribs, the juices dropping on, on the coals, it just does something. It enhances the flavor and the tenderness even if you've got an extra hot fire there. I don't know how to explain it, but it sure works. So four racks of ribs, four half chickens, that is the mega feast that I cooked on the pit barrel cooker today. It's gonna feed a lot of hungry people if I save enough for them. I think I'll save some for them.